What's up guys, it's Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Thanks as always for checking out our videos. Today we're looking at the Blackhawk Emergency Gear Medical Roll. And this video has been a long time coming. A bunch of people have asked me what do I actually keep in my medical kit. So I want to talk about what's in here, but also I want to talk about the actual medical rollout bag as I call it. Let me tell you a little bit about the philosophy behind this bag and then we'll get into the contents. The idea behind this bag is I keep it in my car emergency slash survival bag and this bag and the items in it are for both me and others. So if I have a medical situation and I need, uh, you know, bandages, whatever it is, I've got this in my car. Also, if I come upon an accident and say, hey, you know, this person needs some sort of medical help, now I've got resources. This bag is also for others who might be helping others. And by that, I mean, if I roll up on an accident and let's say there's a, a medical professional there who could really help somebody out, but they don't have the items they need to do so. Well, now I can say, hey, I've got those things. I've got gloves, I've got tape, I've got bandages, whatever. I can give it to that person and then they can actually help somebody else out. So that's the philosophy that goes beyond just, you know, it's just about me and myself. This is to help me and myself if I get in a situation where I need it, but also this can be used to help others and actually help others help others. Let's talk about the bag in particular. It's going to run you between $35 and $45 depending on where you get it. You can see there are two handles here, so you can carry it like this. I'll bring this up close, you can see it says Black Hawk there. When you get this handle out of the way, you can see there are some snaps right here. So unsnap that and that, and then you're going to open up the bag and roll it out. I'll show you what it looks like fully rolled out in one moment. I will note here that on the outside I've got this very bright uh, tack link. And I've got some extra medical tape there, and that's just because I'm trying to save some of the space inside for other items, so I just keep this on the outside. Here's what it looks like all opened up. Your dimensions are 37 inches long by 13.5 inches wide. It features 15 various size clear, what they call quick view pouches, and it's built this way, obviously, so you can see what you want and get to what you want quickly. You don't have a kit where things on the bottom are buried by the things on the top and you can't find it. It's all laid out very nicely. There's also this elastic webbing that runs down the center of the bag and it's stitched down in various places so you can fit different items in the different sections. And as far as your construction, it is made of 1000 denier nylon. As we start off here, I do want to tell you that I have one thing that I can't seem to fit well into the bag, and that is this. So this is your pocket CPR resuscitator, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I have it right now on the outside underneath those straps that go around the top, so I basically have the, uh, the buckle, and it comes right across and holds this in place like so. i got to find a better way to rig it, but just because it is so thick... Uh, right now when I put it even in the center straps, it's hard for me to close up the bag So that is another item that I do have but I will have to find another place to put it starting down at this end pocket This is the longest pocket. It does open uh, Completely so it's not, it's not stitched in the middle. We do have in here a mechanical pencil a light stick This is obviously very usable for signaling or just to keep a kid entertained Maybe while you're helping somebody else we have some medical shears I have a couple different sets of tweezers, I have a couple different sizes of nail clippers, and then I have some razor blades down here. Moving on to these next four pockets, I have antibacterial wipes. I've also got some other options for cleaning out wounds, and I'll show you that later on. I have over here and here uh, multi-purpose wound dressings, and then here I have an 8x10 pad. In the middle here you can see I have a headlamp, and this is dedicated to just this kit, so I don't take this out and use it for anything else. I do want to tell you that, let me just take this off, I had this in the car all winter long, and you can see it still works totally fine. So you want to make sure that you're checking the batteries on any, you know, flashlight or headlamp, but in particular, if you're going to be depending on it in a first aid situation, make sure that you're changing the batteries or at least checking the batteries regularly to make sure that they are uh, ready to go. When you come across a situation where you really need this, you don't want to have a, uh, a headlamp with no power. Moving on to this next section, I have another 8x10 pad. Here I have, I'll hold this up so you can see it. There we go, a tourniquet. And I keep this in here just to keep it as clean as possible. I've got a triangular bandage, some iodine in a dropper, and then some chloroseptic throat lozenges. I keep things like this and Tylenol, Advil, some very basic medicines in this kit. You wanna be extremely cautious before you're giving anybody medicine in an emergency medical situation. If you come across an accident, don't think, oh, I'll give this person Tylenol or Advil to help reduce their pain. That could cause all kinds of other issues. This is mostly for you know me or someone I'm with. Say I'm just out with somebody and they got a headache, now I got some Tylenol or Advil I can give to them. 
Or again, if you come across a situation and a medical professional is there and they say, hey, I could really use, um, you know, Tylenol, Advil, something like that. Now I have some of those options in this kit. Obviously, the chloroseptic is a very baseline thing. If you got a sore throat, you can take something like that. Um, but just be aware if you if you have medicines in a kit like this, be very, very cautious uh, about when it comes to giving them to another person. Next up, I have a bunch of non-latex based gloves in a Ziploc bag. I have some new gauze, another dressing, a bunch of three by four inch pads here, and then a bunch of first aid burn cream here. Quick clot, emergency astronaut style reflective blanket, and then a bunch of band-aids, various sizes here. I also have this Johnson & Johnson first aid guide. I got this with another first aid kit I got a while ago. Very basic, but doesn't take up much space, so I put that in this section as well. In these last two sections in the middle, you can see that I have an Israeli bandage, and do note that it does have a sterile date and an expiration date, so make sure yours is not expired if it's in your kit. I have an ACE bandage, I have some more non-latex based gloves, I have some iodine swabs and some cleansing towelettes, Imodium, Tylenol, Advil, a couple other basic medicines underneath there. I have some medical tape, medical tape, and underneath there I have a very, very basic tourniquet. We've been looking at my Blackhawk medical rollout bag that I keep in my car at all times. I do want to say I very much like the bag itself. It's just nice to be able to roll that out and see everything in front of you. You're not digging into the bottom of some box trying to find some piece of your medical kit. As I close out here, let me offer a few recommendations. I want to encourage you to check out Skinny Medic and The Patriot Nurse, both on YouTube and on Facebook. Great resources when it comes to the medical side of things. I also put a link down below to a story from Nut and Fancy, and it's a very compelling story that I hope will inspire you to build a significant first aid kit to keep in your car at all times so that you can be a resource not only to yourself, but also to others as well. Once again, thank you for checking out our videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check us out on Tumblr. More videos coming soon. Take care.